So, Paul Smith, we're in this amazing museum, um, now full of not only Picasso's art, but your designs around it. How did this come about? Um, well, uh, it came about in uh, a visit by a, a gentleman called Laurent Le Bon, who was the boss here uh, at the Picasso Museum in Paris. Uh, in November 2018, and he came to see me in London. Presumably, I still never asked him this question, but because he knew my shops or he knew uh, my office in, or studios in London is quite well known for its eclectic mix of things. And uh, he came and he said, uh, in 2023, there's going to be the 50th anniversary of Picasso's passing, and uh, we would like to invite you to co-curate and art direct the entire museum, uh, 24 rooms, um, to celebrate his, his passing. And uh, obviously I was <laughs> quite taken back and, uh, and uh, said, that's amazing, but I'm not an art historian and uh, I'm not a Picasso expert. And uh, he said, I know, but we love the way you think. So that was sort of why they wanted you, perhaps, was because you would come at it visually yeah. um, rather than from a sort of Picasso academic perspective. I think, I think exactly that. And I think uh, the, the fact that I'm always had this very childlike um, uh, approach to my life and my work, there's an openness about it there. I, I did mention to uh, Laurent that, that, that actually I'd, I was invited once to the Apple to, you know, their headquarters in, in uh, California um, to talk to all the design staff. And I never, I, I never use a computer. I don't own a computer. <laughs> so <laughs> I think the fact that <laughs> I don't have a lot of knowledge of certain things that I seem to be getting invited to <laughs> to actually do something with them, which is, is, is rather an interesting uh, approach, I think, really. Yeah, so coming at it fresh can be quite, can be quite a good thing. I yeah, mean, were I you a the, Picasso yeah. fan? Yeah, I mean, as much as, uh, as well as uh, Mondrian, as well as uh, Giacometti, Matisse, uh, etc. Yeah, so, but not, not especially, you know, not, he, he was no higher on the list than the ones I've just mentioned, really. So it's, it's quite, a, quite a job to come into the biggest Picasso collection in the world and be given effectively a free hand yeah. to read well, it. Was it, that, it, mean, was that, it was that, those two words, carte blanche, you have carte blanche, you can do whatever you want, which uh, was, you know, it's, still, it's given me goosebumps now just talking about it, to be honest. Uh, and, and so, I mean, I said, it was November, so I said, can I think about it over Christmas? I went home to Pauline, my lovely wife, and, uh, and she said, <laughs> have they got the right smith? <laughs> well, is, is it the real way? <laughs> you know, jokingly, of course. No, but you know, like we were so astounded, really astounded, you know, by the fact that uh, I'd been asked. And, and then she said, well, you know, I think you should do it. And uh, so I, I spoke to him in, in the January and, and, and we just went ahead and, and did it. And, uh, and the, 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 then uh, in March of that year, um, COVID arrived. And so therefore, uh, well, two things. One is I was in my building in London, which has normally has 200 people in it. And I was there on my own for 16 weeks. Uh, trying to keep my company going with no income and design collections and then also start the work on the, on this exhibition. So the first thing really was uh, luckily uh, liaising with a wonderful uh, curators, what well, the wonderful curators here and then eventually one curator called Joanne and, and, uh, and just really um, building up a relationship with them and then doing just having to use this thing called a computer <laughs> which I'd never really used before and and going through the 22,000 artworks that, that are in the archive at the Picasso Museum and then in total about 50,000 artworks because of work you could use from different countries and things like that and so that was very overwhelming. I should think it was overwhelming and I mean lockdown was perhaps quite useful if you've got 
tens of thousands of images to go through. Yeah. How did you approach it? I mean, I mean uh, the, the first thing was <clears throat> discussing with the curators whether we should, um, whether it should be uh, in the order of his life or whether it should be uh, just to do with certain categories uh, or what. And so mostly it's to do with uh, categories, you know, so cubist room, uh, late works room, blue period, uh, uh, and um, and then little quirky things I found like the Vogue, for instance, which was just uh, going through lots and lots of artworks, just finding one 1951 Vogue, I think it was, or 53, um, that he just sort of graffitied on, um, you know, which I, I was sort of familiar with that sort of thing that artists do because um, you know you, they used to well know for drawing on napkins and tablecloths and get your free meal <laughs> uh, but this was on a vogue and, and so I thought well I've got to sort of use that um, uh, but also so so eventually it was it was sort of almost like getting piles of notes around the computer I mean I did it in such a what do you call it old-fashioned way you know you, know, you get my phone out and then I would photograph the screen and then eventually print those off and then there'd be little piles of cubist and then oh that those paintings seem to have a lot of color in them or they've got a lot of stripes in them and then and then slowly building rooms up and then of course working it out with the curators so in fact the actual I hate to call it decorative but you know these sort of ambience of each room came really right at the very end because the biggest task was uh, the layman, me, uh, trying to work out how to take it really seriously, be very respectful to the art, be very respectful to an understanding of people like yourself who have a knowledge of the world of, of art and, and not wanting to come across as insincere or playful or it's playful, but in a very respectful way. And I'd often look up and ask the boss, Mr. Picasso, and say, what do you, would you like that? <laughs> yeah, and uh, and um, quite a few people have, I don't know whether they've been patronizing to me, but quite a few people have said, when they leave the exhibition, that they think he would have really thought it was pretty, pretty cool, you know. Well, he had that playfulness about him, didn't he? Absolutely. I mean, you, you Absolutely. share that. Absolutely. I had a father, luckily, who was a, well, he was an amateur photographer, so that was one visual part of the family. And I started taking photographs when I was uh, 11, I think. And I think the, the point about that was, uh, you know, the viewfinder, now we just hold the phone, but the viewfinder, you have to really get the shot right because you've only, you've got 12 shots in your film and your pocket money to to actually develop and print them. So um, you never, you really hoped you didn't make a mistake with when lining up the shot. And, and so that be, help, helped me become somebody who looks and sees rather than just looks. And then also and the other thing my father was really good at was um, I remember being poorly with the flu or something once and I was in bed and suddenly there was this sort of strange thing out the window and it was a mop with a nose and, uh, and, and, uh, and two eyes and a hat. And he was sort of dancing it around the window just to cheer me up, you know. And uh, that made me emotional. <laughs> oh, so anyway. that's, and, and that's the sort of thing that, that Picasso likes to yeah. do too. Yeah, so, you know, the bull's head and, uh, and many other things. A lot of the assemblage, you call it. You know, the little sculptures are made from a teapot and a, and a bit of old scrap metal and uh, they turn into something, you know. And of course, you have a, a well-known love of cycling, so that yeah. perhaps also brought you yeah, to the Yeah, I was slightly, I was slightly embarrassed to use the uh, the bull's head as a, as the main poster and everything, but it it seemed to be a coming together of too many things. One, my love of cycling. One, my father's way of doing things, and also just the fact that uh, that observational skill and and the reason why uh, in that room there are. Uh, there's the bull's head on one side and on the other side there's handlebars and saddles separated and uh, when most of the public look at the, that, that, room, that side of the room they see handlebars and a saddle 
And when Picasso looks at it, he sees a bull's head. And so it's a real sort of visual. I, I'm sure almost nobody gets it, and I should be in there constantly saying that to people. But, uh, but um, that's I think the, they that get was, it. That was the idea. I, well, think, I, hope they I, do. Think, I think it's clear. I, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's good because I, I hope they do. And in terms of the walls, you've absolutely gone away from the white wall and. Yeah all you have to focus on is the image. You've, yeah. you've gone all out with colour and pattern. How did you decide to do that and how did you decide what to do with it? I mean, that, that, the scary thing about that, it's a really hard question to answer because I don't know how I did it at all. I honestly don't. All I know that is that we design our own shops and we have our own in-house team uh, in London of architect, furniture designers, and, and we, we've always designed our own shops. And also, I've always been a very, uh, I've always wanted my shops to be not confrontational, but very friendly and very, a shop that you don't feel like you need a stiff drink and a new hairdo to walk in. That you can actually go in and there's things to touch and then things to look at. And so I think the approach was, that uh, but then a lot of it was just a bit more literal and I was a bit nervous about that because there's a Harlequin room which is based on the costume that uh, eight-year-old Paul is wearing Picasso's son and I, I just have translated the Harlequin pattern onto the wall um, but that was part of wanting to have a this sort of enfilade you call it like a vista down the down the corridor so you've got this really bright pattern at one end and the pink at the other end so actually when Mr. Laurent Le Bon came to see me and to, to see what I'd come up with uh, right at the very end I think I just said oh for that room I was thinking about that and for that room I was thinking about that and I thought that might be good with some posters and he just said yes <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, wow, <laughs> so that, was, that was a confidence and, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, uh, so I don't know how I came up with it. It came ever so sort of spontaneously in my head. Um, the joy of being an independent company, which is, we, which is rare in fashion these days and, and very hard, incidentally, but, but uh, the joy of that is, is the fact that you, you still have the opportunity to be spontaneous and be, be free and to be a bit brave. Were you trying also to bring in a slightly different audience? Uh, and that was the brief. They said that, that, that basically we want uh, Picasso to be seen in a new light. Uh, we want to have uh, the next generation uh, come to see Picasso. And, and the, there were two, two big things that are a, a burden for any famous artist. Um, one is that the work is, is very well represented around the world in the Museum of Modern Art in the Louvre and, and so a lot of people will have seen the work and so they've said, oh, I've seen that. And the other thing is, of course, when a, when a museum has the title of the Picasso Museum, then a lot of people I've met saying, oh, yes, I came eight years ago or I came ten years ago and I've been, to, yeah, I've been to the Picasso Museum, and then in their heads they don't think they need to come again because they've been. And of course, they, the the team here work really hard at putting on different shows all, all the time. But it's something about the burden of it being called a, a particular uh, designer, painter, or photographer's, you know, museum. So that that was the, the brief was to get get younger people in. Uh, get people to see it in a different way and, and um, the, the thing that's come out of it is so many uh, curators have been from all around the world to it. Some of them I already know have taken an influence from it and, and using colour and paper and stuff um, which is fine uh, and the other but a lot of them are saying it really puts a big question mark over the white cube or the white room you know uh, and, uh, and, of course, the, the other thing that's come up quite a lot is, you know, presumably artists create art because they're hoping to sell it and to get it into people's homes. And very rarely are, uh, a person's home is just a white box. So, I mean, it would probably live on a 
a patterned wall. It probably would live on a coloured wall. And, and of course, it seems really odd that nobody's really actually sort of um, thought about that before. Of course, many, many um, beautiful museums around the world have used colour before. Uh, I was just at the Vermeer in, in Amsterdam, and that's got dark, uh, dark blue, burgundy, dark green, and grey. But I think some of the things I've done here, oddly enough, have so I'm told, it really enhanced the, the work rather than taken away from the work, which is fantastic. There's a stripe room, which is quite bold, and that's got, I think, seven of what they call masterpieces in them, because there's 35 masterpieces and 192 works in the, in the exhibition. Um, and they're, they're quite familiar paintings, but they seem to have just taken on this new life, which is exactly what the brief was. So, and has it brought in that younger audience? What's it like seeing it with it's, people uh, going well, there's around? Two things. I mean, the attendance uh, level is up enormously. Uh, I mean, absolutely amazing. Uh, people from all around the world. Many people have been two or three times uh, and brought family members or sent family members and we've done this big program with schools that, so that you know when people uh, come they can uh, uh, help the, the children can identify certain th uh, parts of the exhibition and m help them look and see. Do you have a favourite room? Do you have a room you're particularly I have pleased a, with? about six favourite rooms. <laughs> I have several favourite rooms. I mean then there's room with uh, posters in England, we, we, we call it fly posting, but you know, if you can go out at the museum here and you see lots of posters just onto walls of a rock band or a new album or a fashion brand, and I like that idea, I thought that was really, really nice. And then the Stripe Room, of course, is very popular. And then the Harlequin Room works really well. So, the, well, maybe we should go and have a look around.